Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Here I am back in my studio, and I'm uh, going to give a little class today. Uh, I'm broadcasting live on uh, YouTube and Facebook, and I'll be putting on my website after the, after the uh, transmission is done. Uh, my wife, Gloria, is in the studio today. Hello. And she'll be monitoring the broadcast in the chat room. Uh, today, uh, last weekend, I was out painting uh, on location at a favorite spot of mine at uh, Locks Point Park, and uh, I found a group of trees that really, really interest me. So I did some sketching out there, did some photographs and so forth, uh, and I decided to bring it back into the studio and uh, paint the same scene I saw on location. So uh, I'm going to take you over to my uh, painting table, and uh, I'm going to show you how, to, how I paint trees, and uh, I think it's a good lesson for all artists and also uh, for beginners that want to want to know how to paint trees and maybe uh, develop a landscape with a lot of trees in it. So let's go to my uh, overhead camera and uh, let me get started. A big shout out there to Linda. I hope you're watching and uh, hope you enjoy the show. Let me turn my light on. Okay. Well, this is a photograph I took of the scene that I was painting. And you can see it's it's a pretty busy uh, scene here with a lot of a lot of trees here in the foreground and a lot of trees in the background. Uh, and this picture was basically the, the scene I saw as I was painting or as I was sketching and painting this particular area. But then I brought it back to the studio and I said, well, there's, I've got to be able to simplify this a little bit because uh, it's, a, it's a complex scene if you look at it uh, uh, from, a, from a standpoint of what I'm looking at here. So what I did, I took it to my, <clears throat> my computer and uh, I have Photoshop and you can, I'm going to show you some interesting thing here. This tree right here, this small tree right here, in a, kind of in the in the fore, just behind the middle uh, foreground. This tree right here, uh, I re, I eliminated that with my Photoshop, and I can do. I've done a lot of things on Photoshop. If uh, if you're interested, uh, give me a comment and maybe some remarks uh, in the video, and uh, I can put together a program using Photoshop. I'll show you how I use it and some useful tools that are here that artists can use. But I eliminated that tree. I simplified that down. And, uh, but also, this was also a very, also a lot of, a lot of uh, detail here to think about. But I eliminated the, and I zoomed in, you saw I zoom in here. Just got these main trees here, and then the background trees. And there's a little, there's a little uh, a picnic uh, shelter back here with a, with a picnic bench. And the pathway going into the back. So, uh, as always, I transferred my my photograph and so forth into my, in my into a, a drawing. And I took a look at the, the detail. I got the, those those trees. I'm going to keep the little fence line. I think the fence line adds a little bit of interest to the uh, to the uh, uh, composition and also the, the pathway. And back here is that uh, picnic table, picnic tables, and a picnic shelter. Uh, the colors I'm going to use today in my palette, and I've also made a little mixing chart here also. I'll show that to you in a second. Uh, I'm going to use uh, yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, pyro red. Pyro red right here in my palette, right here. Pyro red, the, the, the uh, burnt sienna is down here at the bottom. Uh, yellow ochre is right here on the bottom. Uh, then... Uh, Ultramarine blue is up here at the top. I've got that already put out a little bit. I'm going to use a little bit of green number one and a little bit of uh, uh, hooker's green. The two greens for a little bit of the trees. And a little bit of Payne's gray over here in the far corner. Now these are all Holbein artist watercolors. And I'm going to be using a lot of Holbein brushes today, which I'll introduce to you as I get started. And these are all, all the supplies are available at my website www.everestwatercolors.com. Do a nice close up to that. There's a list of colors. Uh, I forgot to put the uh, hooker's green on here, in addition to green number one. 
Okay, my little mixing chart here. Uh, I'm really interested in, in the trees as far as mixing the browns and so forth. So the burnt sienna mixed with the uh, oh, yellow ochre gives me a little darker brown, a little bit of diff a little bit of different color brown here. I like that color. And on some of them, I'm going to add a little bit of pyro red to the burnt sienna with a little bit of pyro red. And of course, burnt sienna with ultramarine blue. It'll give me a dark brown. And then the green tree, uh, uh, green number three, and then hooker's green here for the trees. Uh, this is uh, a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and it's watered down a little bit to give me a lighter value. And I may introduce, I have to use a little bit of uh, uh, cerulean blue for the sky, a little bit of sky peeking through the trees. And over here is a little bit of uh, uh, Payne's gray, dark, dark mix. And I mix that in with greens to give me a darker green. So that's my simple mixing chart uh, of the colors I'm using today. Okay, let me put my, uh, now what I did when I was on, on location, I mentioned I did a, I did a plein air sketch. And this is my plein air sketch here I did of the scene, okay? And this is my uh, little eight by, eight and a half by six inch uh, watercolor pad I have for, for my sketching and for my plein air, for my plein air uh, studies and so forth. But that's that's sort of the, the colors I'm playing with, and the and the diagram, and, and kind of the scared, the uh, kind of my painting plan for today. So I'll move that aside. And now I transfer the my transfer my sketch to uh, a quarter sheet of Gemini watercolor paper, which measures uh, 15 inches long and 11 inches wide. And because of the of the tree, the trees are so tall. I'm going to paint this in a portrait format because uh, of the length of the trees. If I put it in a horizontal format, it would it would take away the the dynamic structure and the composition of the tree. The trees, to me, gave a very tall and and very uh, lengthy position. So that's that's the point I want to bring out today. And the area probably area of interest is probably going to be right in here. This tree here was very interesting. This tree here and. Uh, if you go back to the photograph, this tree here had a couple interesting branches on it. The other ones were all long trees with very little branches. They were up by the top. But this tree here had a couple interesting looking branches. So I'm going to capitalize on that on that uh, shape there. Okay, let me get started. I'm going to use a lot of brushes today. And a uh, recommendation for all artists, uh, from beginner all the way to uh, intermediates and advanced artists, you start out with the biggest brush you have, and here I've got a one inch. This is the whole buying one inch uh, synth synthetic brush, one inch uh, flat brush from Holbein. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and put a little bit of ultramarine with that, and I'll come up with a gray. And uh, what my plan here is, I want I'm going to vary the colors of these trees. I'm going to vary the colors and the textures. So the, the thing when I paint a tree, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, engineering here as far as colors and as far as textures go. So this first tree over here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to work, I'm going to work from the outside in. So the outside tree, this one and this one over here are going to be a little bit uh, less colorful. So I'm going to start with a log, with a large brush, load it up full, fully. I'm going to go in, I'm going to paint this one here. And it's going to be uh, more of a gray, mixed in with a little bit of brown. So I'm going to put this one here. I'm using the one inch flat brush synthetic Holbein. And I'm, I'm dragging it down vertically, but I also turn it sideways and I can get a, a little bit of texture on the edge. I want to do that. Okay. So by push by pulling it down this way, I get a little bump. I get a little bumpy edge, which gives me an indication of the of the uh, edge of the of the tree. 
add a little more I'm gonna add a little water to the mix to change the value a little bit just slightly okay so the first tree the first tree I used a mixture of uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of uh, and burnt sienna to give me that uh, it's kind of a gray mix. Now I switch spray. This is a half inch flat Hobine synthetic brush. Now I get it here. I'm going to use it down here in the this little spot here. So you use the brush to do the job. Little corner over here. Now I'm going to wash that a little bit. It's still a little bit wet, but I'm going to do something to that before it completely dries. But I'm watching the moisture content here. Now, the moisture content, I mean by watch the shine on the paper. There's still shine. That means it's still a little bit wet. So leave that one alone. Okay. So I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take a little more a little more burnt sienna now. Add to this mix. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to paint this tree over here. It's using this using the same brush. The one inch flat, which will cover a lot of material, a lot of ground, and it has a lot of paint in it. And I'm going to vary the color a little bit. I'm going to put a little more, a little more, a little more burnt sienna here. A little more burnt sienna in this particular one. I'm going to vary the color a little bit more over here, just to make to make it a different looking tree. Okay. So watching the moisture over here, and I see the shot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knuckles, take my knuckles, and I'm going to press it on the paper. And what that's going to do, that's going to give me. That's going to give me a texture on that painted surface that'll roughen it up a little bit. So I just use my knuckles a little bit and uh, give that a little bit of a little bit of uh, texture look. I don't want too much burnt sienna over here yet because I want the I want the warmer colors to come in as I go inside the painting. So. Uh, So I still got I got a little more a little more burnt sienna on this tree here to give a little a warmer a little warmer touch because I think the sun's hitting us a little well I'm I'm saying the sun's hitting us a little more so I put a little warmer a little warmer color in there which is burnt sienna compared to the ultramarine. Okay, All right, those are the two big trees now. Uh, this tree here in the center, I'm going to use another brush. Those are two flat brushes. I'm going to use the number uh, number 16 round. This is another Holbein brush. This is the Holbein. I'm going to use uh, a little bit more burnt sienna as I come into the painting, into the center of the paint toward my area of interest. I'm going to get a little warmer color. A little bit warmer. So I'm adding a little bit more burnt sienna into that mix. Now let's see how that looks. I'm going to paint this one in. There we go. This nice big round brush. Uh, let's see. Over here, I think what I'll do is uh, I'll use the spray bottle. I'll use the palette in the bottle, dot spray, and I think I'll just add a couple of dots over here on this one. That's going to add texture to this tree here. Okay, uh, adding water to that to that paint now will give me a blossom, which will be a textured look in that tree. And it's a bigger tree, so it'll show up better. And I think you'll see the difference there when the when the paint dries. So I'm using a round, a big round brush now for this tree here. The size of this tree is pretty good. Uh, Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch a little bit of colors here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, yellow ochre, just a little bit of yellow ochre mixed in with that burnt sienna. And I'm going to put, put that on this, the light side of this tree. I want this, this side of the tree to be, to be a little bit lighter. The sun's coming from this way, so this side of the tree will be a little bit lighter. I'm going to put a little bit of, a little bit of more, a lighter color on this edge of the tree. 
and I'll be at, I'll add shadows to these later on. But right now, I'm just getting the the basic frame, the basic structure of the trees done. Okay. All right. Okay. This tree here. Now this tree here next to the one. This is the one I want to really make really make a little more dynamic. This tree here can just be. I'm going to make this one uh, a lighter, much duller looking. A little bit of paint is gray in here. Just a little bit of paint is gray. Let's see. For this tree here, I'll use the same round brush. So I'm going further back into the background, into the landscape. So I'm going to make this a little bit less colorful. So this is really almost going to be in shadow before when I finish it. Uh, And I'm using the uh, number 16 round synthetic brush. This is a synthetic brush, but it holds a lot of water. And it, has, it comes to a nice, nice sharp point, so you can do a lot of detail work with it. Uh, just by pressing it down, it covers it, it covers the area. So that this one is a little bit duller color as I'm going back into the landscape. Paint's gray in there. As I go up to the top, there's less light up here. Okay. Okay, that's... Okay, that's that's four trees. Now, uh, as an art, I always like to work in uh, odd numbers, which is uh, one more tree would be number five, which is going to be my main interest tree. Now, here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the burnt sienna, I'm going to add a little bit of red to it, just a little, just a touch of red. This is pyro red, which is very powerful. Now, I don't want to make a red tree, but I do want to make a colorful tree. More colorful than the others. And I think I'll move, um, I'll, I'll keep the same brush. And I'm going to add a little more red to this one. A little more red, not everywhere, but just just give me little highlights of red color to give it a little more a little more special. This is a special color now, but I'm more, more special than the other trees. Now the color will dry a little bit lighter. It looks a lot. It looks dark right now. It'll dry a little bit lighter when it dries. It's got uh, burnt sienna, but it's got a touch of red in it to give it a little, a little different, a little more, uh, a little warmer color. But so also, I'm trying to make it also a more interesting color because this is my, uh, this is my area of interest. It's the impact area, and there you put your best colors, your lights against darks, and also your brightest colors. In this case, in the woods, you got to find something. Uh, uh, like a tree that you can show this now this one had a unique shape to it also it had some curves to it which I'll bring out a little bit here at least some white paper I'll go back in there and put in some more color on top of that one when we're, when we're getting near the end okay uh, now, I'm going to make sure those are dry. Uh, before I go, though, I'm going to use another brush. Now, this is a number six. This is number six round, uh, Holbein. And I'm going to use a little bit of a yellow ochre. And I'm going to put these small branches in. These small branches that came off this tree here. I'm going to use yellow ochre here. A little bit of yellow ochre. A light color. And this, this limb up here, lots of water because I want it to be a light, a light color. 
the more the more water you put in with the paint it will will lighten the uh, lighten the color lighten the intensity All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna put the dryer on the blow dryer to make sure these trees are dry. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the sky in. I got some. I got some uh, sky color here with the uh, cerulean blue. I'm using the quill brush. I'm using the silver brush quill brush, and uh, it's another nice brush. Also, it's a watercolor brush, and it holds a lot of paint, but it's also a nice. Uh, Way to put down color. It's, it's uh, easy to use. It fills up a lot of paint, but it also covers a big area. So uh, the sunlight comes is going to come through. The sky showing through some of the trees is going to show through here. So I'm going to make a little. Maybe a little bit over here, just a touch. And then I want to go up here a little bit more. I'm putting in the, I'm putting enough uh, sky here to peek uh, uh, through these trees. They give a little more root because there was there was uh, some sky holes where there were the sky was coming through the the branches and uh, through the leaves. So this this is part of the scene. Oh, this is not a big part of it, but it's it's part of the scene that I saw, and I think it makes it more interesting to have a little bit of sky, a little bit of sky showing. Okay, that's enough of that. All right, now let me uh, let me dry that. Okay, the next uh, the next area I'm going to put in is the is the trees, uh, the leaves. So I'm going to mix a little bit of uh, green number one down here, and look, put a touch of uh, ultramarine blue in that, just to dull it down just slightly. And I'm going to start out with the uh, the tree color up here in the top. Get some leaves going. I'm going to leave a lot of white paper showing here because I'll come back later and, and fill in the 
some of those colors. So the lightest green is going to be around where the uh, where the uh, sky is peeking through a little bit of light colors there. But then as I get further away, I'm going to pick up the darker green, which will be Booker's green and that ultramarine blue and uh, I think uh, when you look at the colors, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Payne's gray in that, just to dull that green down just slightly. Just to take away that dark. I don't want that green to be so powerful to take over everything. So up here in the top, there's going to be uh, a lot of leaves going. And I'm using the I'm using mop, mop brush with uh, just uh, little dabby strokes, dabbing my strokes here, just to give me the texture look of tree of of limbs and uh, branches up here on the top of these trees. Now, as I come down here, there's, uh, the, the trees are darker also down here behind these foreground trees. I'll put some of that lighter green in here because I'm going to go back and put some background trees in. So let me start with a, a lighter mix here of the greens. So I'm using, using more of green number one now, just to, uh, down here by the ground. Uh, I'll be adding a little darker, a little darker later, but right now, just to get it started. Okay, I gotta dry that. Okay, now I'm going to take the uh, number six round and mix up some uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. Give me a, a dark brown color. And now I'm going to start introducing some of these tall trees here in the background. So with this number six, uh, number six round, I'll get the, uh, you know what, I'm going to ch just change my idea. I'm going to, I just changed my mind. I'm going to use the big brush. I'll show you why. Uh, I'll use both brushes, but I'm going to start out with a large brush. That's uh, ultramarine blue mixed in with burnt sienna. Give me a dark brown. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the edge of the brush. I, lay, I, I put the brush down into the palette, make a nice sharp edge. See how sharp that edge is? It's like a razor. Okay. Then I can then I can just take the end of the brush and and just tap and I can create 
a straight line I'll do another one over here so these are the background trees that are off in the distance let's see I'll get more a couple more over here so using the edge of this brush I can just uh, cover with a lot of paint and just what I'm doing just stamping the edge edge of the brush to give me that give me that sharp look or give me the tree trunks because these are just long long poles is all they are just long tall trees get one in here back here I'll leave this alone over here let's get one more in here so for this large this large area this large space I'm using a big brush uh, to move me a little faster Get one more in here. Okay, now I'll go ahead and take the uh, number six round now. Number six round, I can go in and I can do a little bit of, make my changes here now on the, now I got a little bit of bleed here from the, the wet paper. So I just take a paper towel, I take a, a, a tissue and I go along the edge where the excess is and I press it down pull that up there just use the edge of the tissue pull up that paint okay There's a little bit over here. Some of that, some of the, uh, some of that green was still a little bit damp. But we can go back here, and we can go back and change it. And we can always go back and put more paint on top of that. So you can always fix everything in watercolor is fixable. I learned that a long time ago. Everything, everything you paint can be fixed. We can lift the colors. We can add colors. We can erase colors. Okay, let that dry. All right, now I'm going to go back in and I can do a little more. What I'm doing now is putting a little more, a little more uh, change in the size of these trees. Make them a little bigger, a little fatter, a little thinner. Fatter, really, because I'm adding, I'm adding paint, I'm adding pigment to this. I put one in here. So all these background trees in the woods here, uh, there's a lot of them there. You can you don't want to paint them all. Just paint enough to indicate, just indicate a little bit of what's there. Uh, as an artist, just trying to give you an impression of what I saw and paint a little bit of what it looked like. Okay, now I think what I'll do is take the uh, Uh, this is the uh, half inch flat, and I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the building in. It was a little picnic, a uh, little picnic shelter here. Which I'm going to paint in here, put in the, the top of the roof.
So Locks Point has a lot of uh, picnickers out there in the summertime. Uh, this is one of their favorite places. They out here you'll see a lot of on the weekends and on holidays, especially you'll see a lot of picnickers out here at the on the picnic tables. There's little cooking stoves there uh, that they can heat up their picnic dinner or lunch. And I'm putting in the poles that hold up the shelter. And this roof has a little darker, darker section back here. And uh, there's a couple picnic tables here. There's one here in the middle ground. I'll put that in. There's the bench, and here's the top of the table. And there's another one behind that. And this little this little square box here, that's the really that's the little stove that's there where you can cook your cook your meals. A little stove. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I'll do doing the foreground here, I'm going to put in the I'll take the uh, okay. Now, this is another brush, this is a three quarter inch flat brush. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and burnt sienna, a mixture of yellow ochre and burnt sienna, kind of a sandy color. And I'm going to put that here in the foreground uh, where there were some leaves on the ground. And uh, just putting that color in there, just filling in the filling in the blanks. I here use a little bit of a dry brush stroke. Uh, you lay the flat, you lay the flat brush down flat on the paper, uh, and just drag it across the paper, and it'll give you a nice dry brush stroke, which just gives you the texture. Of the ground or rough surface. This basically was just a dark uh, brown colors in here. I'll put I'll put a little bit of uh, a touch of red in here also because there was some red. These were cedar trees uh, or evergreen trees, so they had a lot of pine needles on the ground, which were reddish color. Reddish brown. Most of them were brown because they were had been laying on the ground for quite a while, but uh, they still had a reddish tone to them. A bit of brown back here. Okay, now this fence line, uh, a little bit of yellow ochre, a lot of water. Uh, this fence line here had a post. Put the uh, I'll cover the whole thing. There's a little it's on shadow, but I'm gonna I mean part of it's in shadow, but I'm gonna put the whole color in first. Block in the block, put in the base coat, which is yellow ochre. And then I'll I'll paint the shadow pattern over top of that. Paint the light color first. And we'll go back in and put the shadow pattern on top of that. Okay, let me uh, let me hit the dryer. I'll make sure everything's dry. Okay, now the final step here is uh, I've got all the white showing, so I'm going to go back in 
and I'm going to uh, cover up these areas again with, with a second layer. So the first layer is always just to get there, just to block in the color and uh, block in the areas and to get a base coat going. The second layer is to add a little more, a little more color in places, also to eliminate some of the white colors and bring you into the focal point of, of the painting. So I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, pull up a little bit of this color here, mix up. I'm gonna mix up what I call a dark, a dark but a dull gray. I don't, I mean green. I don't want a really bit of burnt. I'm putting a little bit of Payne's gray mixed in with that. Uh, I put hooker's green. I put a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue to darken it up a little bit. Then I add a touch of a touch of Payne's gray to dull, just to dull it down slightly. Knock off that green color. Okay, it's green, but I don't want it to be uh, a green that's not look. I want it to look more natural. Okay, so I'm going to go back here now. I'm going to put in. I'm going to knock out some of these uh, white areas, and I'm just going to put in some brush strokes that'll give me also texture of some of the of the leaves on the edges. So the edges now. I'm working on the edges now of these areas. Don't want to don't want to eliminate all that uh, green or green colors up, but I do want to eliminate some of the some of the white paper, and I want to cover up. Uh, I want to uh, improve on the edges. I'm knocking down some of the uh, some of the shapes up here, so I don't want the eye to go up there. So I'm knocking down the areas that I don't want to be, just, don't want the viewer to be distracted by. And, and some of these areas up here uh, are not that important. These are just the story here is the deep woods, and back here these trees are just there. They're not, they're not the important, they're not the important thing I want to show in this particular painting. So right now, this this will uh, uh, this this kind of cleans up the uh, this cleans up the edges, makes them a little more a little more uh, believable, a little more interesting, and it, it covers up the uh, eliminates the white paper. Now at least some of the white paper I'm going to leave. I like that little sparkle, a little sparkle of white paper. Light paper is good, but some of the white edges I don't want to have. That I want those to be eliminated now some of these will be uh, you know shadow patterns going across the trees from the from the branches um, so that they are aren't all the same color I'll mix up a little bit more Got to mix up some more here one thing about a large painting like this, now a quarter, quarter sheet's uh, not a tremendous large, but it's a big painting. It's a large paper to cover. So you got to mix up enough paint to cover the uh, paper. Maybe down here, not go up to, yeah, a nice dark color in there. Yeah. Or not call some of that. That white, and I'll go back in. I'll probably I'll go back a little bit again and, and emphasize some of those background trees. Right now, I'm trying to knock, trying to get the edges and the the background colors to be a little more uh, less defined. I want them to be I'm integrated here with this, this colors here, this section. Coming around my, uh, 
I'm coming around my uh, area of interest here, so I'm going to be very careful. I move a small brush. I want to just, just dab around with that color. I want to keep that, I want to keep that uh, tree clean. So I'm moving around this tree very carefully. I want to save the edges and I save the color that I have there. I'm just, I, want to, I don't want to change the color. I like the colors there, but I'm trying to improve on uh, the shape that I see. Now on this side, I'm, again, I'm going to use the smaller brush to come in and put in a nice dark, nice dark color here. A little more shadow. So I want the eye to come into this area right here. So that's the area that I'm focusing on as far as getting the darkest darks. And now I go back to the bigger brush. Uh, I'm using the three quarter inch. I'd use interchangeable as long as it's a I'm using a larger brush. That's, that's the point. I want to cover the ground, but I want to hold have a lot of paint. And the purpose here is I want to I want to darken up this background a bit so these trees will because the trees on the foreground were lighter because the sun the sun was coming in and lighting up those trees but the background was all in shadow so I, I eliminate a lot of the lights back there so that it doesn't take away from these trees in the foreground. Okay. Okay. I'm using the three quarter inch brush. Now I'm going to put some uh, darks around this uh, picnic table. And this picnic. Uh, go back to the small brush again. So I'm just trying to just trying to go around some of these shapes here. Again, a shadow behind. Picnic cabin and the, the darks behind the picnic tables. You have a comment in Everett it says nice with some clap emojis. Whoa. Well, thank you for the comments. There, uh, there's some that I look forward to watching and looking at. There's a, uh, you can write something to me uh, if you have a question or you'd like to see uh, some other. Uh, subjects or you'd like to see more interested in, the, in how I did this again I'd be glad to answer questions and uh, there's always and I'll be back you know each week I come back every Thursday and do another painting so I can always add in a feature a couple weeks ago I had some questions about uh, painting figures so last week I did a, a painting using figures so Questions and comments to inspire what I will will do in the next next program. So the comments to me are very valuable. And make sure everybody those are watching. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you're in, informed of my next broadcast, uh, which will be next Thursday. Okay, now down here I'm going to paint in some shadows now, dark brown. I'm going to do a, a little shadow here on this uh, fence post. So this is the shadow side. The light's coming from the right side and going across to the left. 
and this was in shadow here. Yeah, I like I love painting these uh, these rails, these rail fences. They're just so interesting, and they're all they're all over this park. Um, this is in shadow here. Now, the, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll use the bigger brush. I'll take the bigger brush. I'll take the big round brush and I'm going to paint in some shadows. Well, I think I'll add, first of all, before I do that, I think I'll take a little bit of, take this smaller brush here. This is the half inch flat. I'm going to take a little bit of the red, a little red, just a little bit. And I'm going to introduce a little bit of that. I'm going to, now I'm just going to tap it around. Now these these could be uh, just going to, I'm just going to tap it on the paper. These these would signify pine needles and and uh, twigs and so forth lying on the ground. Uh, it had a little reddish a little reddish texture to it. I'll put those in there just just to give a little bit of uh, indication of something on the ground besides grass okay and i'm going to put a little more paint into this this uh three quarter inch i'm going to put a little more paint in this one a little darker and i'm going to drag it i'm going to drag it do a dry brush across here Give me some texture. Pathway back here, pathway. Okay, then I'm going to take the uh, number 14, number 16, number 16 round. And I'm going to put in some uh, shadow patterns. Uh, there was a large shadow pattern. This tree right here had a, a large shadow pattern over here. And there was a large shadow pattern from this, from this tree here. And across the ground. And it ran it ran all the way back behind this other tree and I had a there was a shadow cast here by this uh, fence line And there were a couple other shadows back here. There were shadows uh, running across behind this. And it was an interesting uh, shadow pattern up on the building. It was uh, from, the, from the shadows from the, from the trees and everything. They had a cast shadow on the top of this building. I can put that in. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to vary them. Some are going to make them some large, some small, some straight, some crooked. They were cast shadows from the, from the trees and, and the leaves and everything around uh, up, in the, up on the trees. Give a real interesting effect on the top of this. Uh, okay. Oh, I said I was going to do one more thing. I was going to put a little, a little layer down here on the bottom. And I 
think what I'll do is uh, take this out. And they'll mix up some little ochre. A little bit of burnt sienna, just a little bit. A lot of water. Yeah, I'm mixing up a little bit of mixture here for the uh, pathway. Uh, a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to put, this is going to be the final touches here in the foreground. Just just to be able, I'll get some light color here. Uh, and I'm going to put a little bit of touch of red in here too. Just a touch of red. So. This, this is going to cover up that white paper. It'll it'll sort of uh, integrate the scene it together. You don't want to have uh, in a painting. You don't have too many disconnected points. You want to have everything run together. Uh, value wise and color wise, and. So this, this will pull the foreground together and mix it in with the background. Integrate it in with the background. So I'm taking this mixture here. I'm going right back into that tree line. And integrating the foreground, middle ground, and the background. Okay, I think, I think I'm pretty... Pretty close to being done. There's a few things here that could be touched up on. Uh, some of this white paper can be knocked down a little bit more. Could be a little more, a little more darks over here, bounce behind some of these trees and shadow. And I could take some of that uh, darker brown, which is a burnt sienna and so forth, and I could. Make these trees look a little more pronounced. Remember, I covered them with green. Now I'm going back and covering the brown over top of the green. I want because I want them to be because uh, those background green greenery was in was in the background trees. These were these are a little bit more prominent. And I can put some branches on here while while I'm doing it. some branches on these trees just here and there I'm gonna leave the birds out the birds were there but I'm not gonna paint birds so uh, bring this one right on down to the ground And this this one over here needs a little help, a little more, a little more definition on this tree over here. And you don't have to show the whole tree; just show uh, a little bit of, a little bit of dots and dashes, something that's visible. Just enough to show that it was a tree. Okay, okay. Now let's put a mat around that and. Uh, I think what I'll do is I think I'll before I do it, I think I'll take the mat. Uh, I think I'll take the uh, tape off. Take off the tape so we can take a look at it and uh, look at the. Uh, now after I do a painting like this in a studio, uh, I may go back and do some touch up on it later. It just it just depends on how much more time I want to spend on it. 
Okay. This is, uh, I've got to move some stuff around here. I've got to move some stuff. Because this is a portrait, I, I usually have usually have myself set up for landscape, but for a portrait, I have to move things aside a little bit. Okay. Okay, I think that gives you the idea there. Uh, I think what, what I have here is I captured the depth. You got the foreground trees were a little bit lighter and then the background trees a little bit darker. And what I could do, what I do is sometimes on a painting like this, is I'll go in and fine tune some places and then I'll take a smaller mat and I can zoom in on say an area like this I can zoom in on an area like that and I can crop out some of the painting and that'll come up very close to what I did on location the one location painting and the one I did here in the studio. So uh, I'll probably do a little more touch up on that here to, uh, left after after the show, and uh, I'll post that on the uh, on the on the uh, Facebook and on YouTube after it's done. I'll put that in the comments below on the on the photograph of the painting. Let's go back to my uh, main camera. Okay, that was the painting for today, uh, my uh, trees in the Locks Point Park, which I really enjoyed painting on location. Just such a peaceful place, uh, uh, very, very quiet out there. Uh, only the boaters are already out in the water, okay, so with nobody around, uh, just a few people here and there in the cars. But I was basically uh, isolated out there, just, just painting away and uh, painting what I saw. I really, really was interested in the, the shapes of those trees and the depth in there. And uh, I can go back on the painting here and probably add a little more, a little more uh, depth as far as putting a little darker, a little darker colors in the background and pull some of those colors out the, the way they are now. But I'm very pleased with how it op, op, how it did today, and I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel and give me some comments. Also, uh, uh, give me some comments on uh, Facebook. And uh, I'll be back again next week on Thursday at three o'clock. Join our group. So you can join our group on uh, Facebook. It's uh, Fa uh, Everest Art on Facebook. So Ever Everest Watercolors on Facebook is, a, is an art page I have that you can uh, also look at the painting I did. And also you can make comments there. And you can submit your version of the painting. So I'd like to have you join. I'll have a, a link to that below also in the description below of this, of this video. So hope to see you on YouTube. Hope to see you on Facebook. So we'll see you, so we'll see you next week at Thursday at 2 o'clock. Bye.